Good morning, Interweb. Builder's Log 1. Today we're going to start construction of our new fictional universe. Specifically, we are going to start with, where I like to start always, with a star system. In keeping with the ethos of this series, I'd like things to be fairly straightforward, so I'm thinking of going with a single star system. With that star being a main sequence star, which I'll explain in a little bit. Probably a minimal amount of planets, say maybe two to four. And one of those being a habitable world. Something like that. Not too radical. No star system without a star, so let's begin there. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I absolutely love just crunching numbers and doing the math on my world building. But I appreciate that not everyone is into maths the way that I am. So what I've done is I've made a thing called the Worldsmith. And this is part of the reason why I've been gone for like four months. I was prepping for this series. Part of that prep was creating this. This is a spreadsheet, like a suite of calculators and guides that is basically all the basic information on artifacts seen over the past like six or seven years condensed into a single spreadsheet. And we'll be using this throughout this series. This spreadsheet is entirely free to use. Anyone can use it. All you need to do is go down to the description of this video and all the videos in this series, click on the link, and then you will be met with something that looks like this. And all you need to do is hit make a copy. And that will save a copy of the Worldsmith to your Google Sheets. Now that copy will be a hard copy, i.e. if I make changes to the Worldsmith, those changes won't be reflected in your copy. So it might be worth periodically coming back and downloading the spreadsheet again to make sure that you have the most current and up-to-date version. And is there anything else on that before we begin? Oh yeah, between myself and the patrons, we've tried to debug this as much as possible, but I'm sure there's still some bugs and errors in here. If you happen to spot one, please let me know and I will rectify it ASAP. All right, without further ado, let's start building a star. First up, what even is a main sequence star? So main sequence stars are sun-like stars, stars that are fusing hydrogen into helium in their cores. They're in a thing called hydrostatic equilibrium. They're really stable. They just kind of keep on keeping on, not changing much over geological time. It's kind of like the midlife period of a star's evolution. You know, they got a good government job, a partner, 2.5 children, a dog and a white picket fence. Everything's gravy, no hassle, no drama prime real estate for a habitable world. Now, all stars, including main sequence stars, are categorized using the O, B, A, Fine, Gungan, Kiss Me system, with O stars representing high mass stars and M stars representing the lowest mass stars, with a gradient formed in between. So B stars are a little bit less massive than O stars, a stars are a little bit less massive than B stars, and so on, all the way down to the lowest mass stars, M stars. Now, high mass stars and low mass stars have opposing characteristics. So high mass stars will be very large. They'll have large radii. They'll also be very luminous. They'll output a lot of energy and they'll be really hot but they won't live for very long and their densities will be relatively low and they'll be blue in color. Low mass stars are the polar opposite. They're very small, so they have a low radius. They don't put out an awful lot of energy. Ordinarily, their temperature is quite low, but they live for a really long time and they're quite dense and they're red. And again, there's a gradient in between. Now, the spreadsheet accepts masses between 0.075 to, I think it's 99 solar masses. And a solar mass, FYI, is equal to the sun. So our sun is one solar mass. So if your star was two solar masses, it would be twice as massive as our sun. Sol basically means relative to our sun. If your star is lower than 0.075 solar masses, it's not a star, it's a brown dwarf. And if it's greater than 99, 100 masses, I'm not even sure main sequence stars can get that massive, so I don't actually know what it would be. And in any case, the upper end of the spectrum is weird and nebulous, so I wouldn't really go near it. In fact, I would advocate that the only range that's really applicable to us is 0.5 to 1.4 solar masses. 
In fact, let me just move this up here. Think of this as being like the habitable range. And if you go outside this range, you run into a few issues regarding, you know, organic life, habitability, etc. So with very high mass stars, the problem is UV radiation and like just time. High mass stars output their peak radiation in the UV and too much UV is really bad for organic matter. So that's a hindrance for life. Perhaps a bigger hindrance is the fact that very high mass stars have very low lifespans. And if we assume that Earth is not abnormal here, and it takes life billions of years to evolve, many high mass stars only live for millions of years. So there's not enough time for life to evolve naturally on planets orbiting those stars. They could be colony locations for sure, but naturally evolving life is a bit tricky. With low mass stars, there's also two problems. Flares and locking. So remember, low mass stars don't put out an awful lot of energy. So therefore, if we want our planet to receive Earth-like levels of heating, that planet's going to have to orbit really close to that low mass star. And there will come a point where it's so close to the star that it'll be locked to the star, i.e. it'll the planet will present the same face to its star always. Think like the moon and Earth. The moon always presents the same face to Earth, except apply it to a planet and a star. A planet will always present the same face to its star. That's not a deal breaker for habitability. It just makes it very not Earth-like and will present further problems down the road. I would consider it more of an advanced build. The bigger problem for habitability, not insurmountable though, is flares. Very low mass stars tend to be flare stars. And these are stars where randomly they'll just decide to like double, triple, quadruple their energy output in a sudden burst. And remember, a habitable world orbiting a low mass star will be quite close to the star. So that means every so often, just randomly, the whole planet will become completely irradiated, which is just very bad news for habitability. None of these, again, are insurmountable. They just present problems. And this mass range here makes it so that if you pick a mass in this range, these problems won't be an issue for you. So let's just chuck in a random mass here. Oh, FYI, as per the big red border, only edit blue cells. If you edit any of the other cells, the whole spreadsheet will break, and that's terrible. And if ever you run into issues, you don't know what to do, just hover over the eye icon, and there's a big write-up I've done. So again, you should be fairly sorted. So yeah, anyhow, let's throw in a mass. Let's put, let's put the lower end of the spectrum, 0.5. So 0.5 solar masses, i.e. this star is half as massive as the sun. Spreadsheet populates and we get all this loveliness. So our class is a K star. So we're down near the bottom end. 9.2 V. Now I need to explain this. Each of these categories can be further subdivided with a numeral. I think it's 0 to 9.9 .9, if I recall correctly. And the way it works is that 0 represents the highest mass of a given class and 9.9 .9 represents the lowest mass of a given class. So a K0 star, highest mass K star, a K9.9 .9 star, lowest mass K star. So this boil will be near the bottom of the K spectrum. And then V here, or rather Roman numeral 5, that's just the label we give to a main sequence star. None of this actually matters, just a cool bit of flavor text. Now we can see that the maximum age of our star is 80 giga years. A giga year is a billion years. So this star will live for 80 billion years, which is a long time and like longer than the age of the universe, longer than time itself. Our universe literally hasn't existed long enough for some of the lower mass stars to die, which is just like nuts when you think about it. In the current age tab, all you need to do is input the age of your star. It can be anything as long as it's less than the maximum age and obviously less than the age of your universe. So I don't know, let's say 13.7 billion years. Well, hey, there you go. Radius, size of the star, units, or sols, or solar radii. So this boyo is 0.57 times as big as our sun. Luminosity, how much energy it puts out. Units are L sols, so that's solar lumens, I think, or solar luminosities. So this boyo is about 6% as luminous as our sun. So I wasn't joking when I said that low mass stars, luminosity, very low. Density, self-explanatory, 2.6 times as dense as the sun. Temperature, when dealing with astronomical um, structures, temperature is usually listed in Kelvin, but you can easily convert that 
via a quick Google search into Celsius or Fahrenheit if you want. Star color, now this is a thing. The color represented here is kind of an attempt at true color. So if you imagine you're in space, you're not in an atmosphere, you're just floating in space and you're looking at this star here and somehow magically the exposure of the light has been dropped such that it doesn't blow out your eyeballs. This is likely the color that you would see in that scenario. So kind of a true color devoid of the shortcomings of human vision. The actual color the star will appear to be on the surface of a planet, like a human looking at the star on the surface of a planet, would likely be white. Because stars, even the lowest luminosity stars, are still really luminous. And they'll just overexpose your eyeballs and just everything appears white. Now that is slightly contentious because I've seen sources that state that, yeah, all stars will appear white, except for the really low mass stars, like the K and M stars. Those stars, they'll appear more like whitey orange so like white with a tinge of orange or red in them i can't actually verify what would actually occur would they just be pure white or white tinged with a warm color i don't actually know i just usually say white and i'm happy with that so watch out for that one habitable zone really simple this is a area of space around your star where if a planet orbits in this area it will receive relatively Earth-like levels of heating. Closer to the inner limit here, the warmer your planet is. Closer to the outer limit here, the cooler your planet will be. And the units here are astronomical units. And one astronomical unit is, I think, 150 million kilometers, if I recall correctly. Basically, the distance from Earth to the Sun. That's how an astronomical unit is defined. And finally, the spreadsheet runs a check to see whether or not Earth-like life could be supported on a planet orbiting in the habitable zone around the star that you've created. If the star falls within this range of masses, and sufficient time has passed such that a planet could form around the star and then life could form on said planet, the spreadsheet will return yes. If that's not the case, the spreadsheet will return no. And sometimes the spreadsheet will return star too young, like if I do this. And what that means is that all the conditions are correct, it's just that the age of your star isn't old enough for life to have evolved. Or for life comparable to Earth to have evolved. And that cutoff, if I recall correctly, is, yeah, 3.5 billion years. Now that's a bit of a fudge, and there's no real way of knowing exactly how long it takes for life to evolve. You know, sample size of one and all. But after having talked to a few folks, it seems like 3.5 is a fairly good somewhat conservative estimation of how long would it take life to evolve. So if your star is younger than 3.5 billion years, not enough time to have, you know, terrestrial megaflora and fauna. All right, so that is the spreadsheet explained, mass explained, cool. Let's actually now build a star I want. I don't want this star at all. I think I am going to go for a relatively high mass star. Yeah, let's just let's just input the highest mass in this range. Okay, see where that gets us. And the reason why I'm doing that is remember high mass star, lots of energy. A planet with Earth-like levels of heating would need to orbit far away from said star. The further out the orbit, the longer a year is on the planet. So I'm kind of envisaging a habitable world with a very long year length. Hence the high mass. Now, immediately I see a bit of an issue here. Maximum age of the star is 3.6 billion years, and our current age is 3.5 billion years, as low as I'm comfortable going and still declaring that there is terrestrial megaflora and fauna existing on this world. That only gives us 100 million years wiggle room before the star exits the main sequence, and I suspect the star will begin to show signs of volatility a little bit before it officially exits the main sequence, so I think this is a bit tight here. So I think this star is too massive. Let me reduce this down. What's 1.3 m sol look like? So maximum age is 4.5 billion years. Current age is 3.5. So that's a billion years. If I go down another little bit, go to 1.2. 1.2. 1.2. Okay, so it's 2.2 billion years. Let me increase this a little bit. Give us a little bit more wiggle room. Let's say 4.2. So there's 1.5 billion years before the star exits the main sequence. Plenty of time. We're not running into any issues there. 
Cool. And actually, do you know what? Today is the 24th of June. So let's uh, let's just put a mass of 2022-06. Let's do that. Just as a fun little Easter egg. Okay, cool. Uh, radius, 12% bigger than our sun. Fine with that. Luminosity, 2.2 times greater than our sun. Cool. Density, about 90% that of our sun. Now, you might think, density, like, who cares about density of a star? All of these parameters have ramifications going forward in the other spreadsheets down the bottom here. So they all matter. Specifically, density is going to be used to plot how close a planet in the planetary system could get to the star. So there's, they all have relevance. Temperature, fine. Grand star color, cool. It's white. No hassle there. Um, Hubble zone, yep, nice and far out. So we get some really long years. Up to about 700 Earth days, depending on the rotation of the planet. That's really long. Earth-like life, yes, because we stuck to the mass range and our age is greater than 3.5. Cool. And that is nearly everything. No, oh, one last thing. So that is the current age of the star. Current age of the star is 4.2 gig years. But it's obviously not the current age of the planet because it takes a while for a planet to form after a star is formed. And I might need to actually Google this. I think our sun is 4.6 billion years, isn't it? How old is the sun? It's 4.6 billion years. Yeah, and I think the Earth is 4.5. How old is the Earth? The Earth is 4.5. It's about 100 million years in it again. So yeah, let's say current age of the planet is... 4.1 gig years. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. So, barring future changes, I'm going to say that's canon. I like these figures. It's habitable, it's fairly Earth like, and it gets me that long planetary year I'm after. So, that's cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this off air and I'm going to do a little write up, like create a reference document for this, this setting. And I think I'm going to release that to the patrons as an extra little thank you for supporting the show. So if that's something you're interested in, links are in the description. Go over to Patreon, check it out. Also, I've changed all the tiers on Patreon, just FYI. And there's a new director's commentary tier where the first Saturday after each of these videos is released, I'll do like a patron-only live stream and we sit down and we talk about the episode in greater detail, field some questions, etc. So again, if that's the thing you're interested in, Patreon, links in the description. You know the jazz. And that's it. One star, done. Next time, we'll start working on the planetary system. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, Edgar out.